Last time I painted this picture of the subatomic world where the up and down quarks lived in their castles, in their fortresses, in their strongholds, in their keeps, where the strength of the fortress came from the strong nuclear force and they were contained, they were isolated, they were safe. And they ruled the most stable, the most, the most massive agglomeration of particles that we know, the protons and the neutrons. Outside the walls of those castles lived the peasants, the electrons, the poor, tiny, insignificant particles that do the work of, of making chemistry happen, of making life happen. But they don't get to sit inside the safety of the castle. They can be raided. They can be stolen. They can be ripped apart. They can even be destroyed on a whim because they don't have the protection of the castle walls inside the atomic nuclei themselves. There are other, even less fortunate creatures in the universe than the poor electrons. There's an entire class that are living on the fringes. They're like the untouchables. They are the, the leper colony, the, the ones that people won't even acknowledge they exist, and those are the neutrinos. The neutrinos are like the electrons, they're leptons, they're in, they're related to the electrons, but even the electrons turn their noses up at a neutrino, if it even acknowledges the existence of a neutrino. There are, again, three kinds of neutrino, just like there are three kinds of electron, the electron, the muon, the tau. There are three kinds of neutrino, the electron neutrino, the tau neutrino, the muon neutrino. These neutrinos are uncharged, they carry no electric charge, so the electromagnetic force doesn't see them. The royal messengers, the photons that ferry information from place to place in the universe, don't even see it. The strong nuclear force couldn't care less about the neutrino. And pretty much nobody cares about the neutrino. There are billions of neutrinos passing through every square inch of every second. You don't even notice them because they don't interact with normal matter. They don't interact with quarks. They don't interact with electrons. They can stream through. They can even enter the walls of the castles themselves, the atomic nuclei, without anyone noticing or caring. It's like they're almost ghosts. They're barely there, but they do cause trouble. They do cause trouble. They do have a little bit of mass, which... Neutrinos are so insignificant for a long time, we thought they didn't have mass, and it's only relatively recently that they, we realized they do have a little bit of mass. And they're constantly changing their masks. Neutrinos have a special ability, unknown to other particles, where they can cycle through the different flavors of neutrinos as they travel. So one moment you might look and say, okay, finally paying attention to one, what am I seeing? I'm seeing an electron neutrino. Then you turn around, do something, you look back, boom, it's a muon neutrino. Huh? You look again, tau neutrino. Back, electron, muon. It, you're never quite sure what you're looking at when you're looking at a neutrino. They can constantly cycle their identities. And because of this, because they can enter castle walls, they can cause trouble. They can occasionally interact in mess up the inner workings of the quarks inside of their protons and neutrons. But who's going to stop that? I mean, strong nuclear force doesn't see a neutrino. Electromagnetic force doesn't see a neutrino. Gravity sees a neutrino because gravity sees everything, but like gravity also doesn't care. Like it's too weak. It's just spies, man. It's just spies. It's just talk. It's just whispers. It's not actually action down here. If there's a neutrino infiltration, then the quarks sitting in their fortresses turn to one other thing, and that is the special forces of the atomic world. The special forces, the W and Z bosons. The W and Z bosons carry the weak nuclear force, which I wish the weak nuclear force was called something else. I wish it was called something like the special nuclear force or the, the interesting nuclear force, anything but weak. Yes, it's weaker than the strong nuclear force, but it's incredibly special. The weak nuclear force is capable of doing things that the other forces can't. It's capable of performing actions. One, it can talk to neutrinos. The weak nuclear force 
can intercept a neutrino and do something interesting to it where no other force can. And the weak nuclear force can interact with electrons and the weak nuclear force can interact with quarks. Who else? Who talks to quarks? The domain of the strong nuclear force. Yes, electromagnetism also talks to quarks because they're charged, but who can do it all? It's the weak nuclear force. Talk to quarks, talk to electrons, talk to neutrinos. They can switch one kind of quark for another. They can transform a down quark into an up quark or an up quark into a down quark. They can make that switch. They can, they can talk to the peasants, they can talk to the outcasts, and they can talk to the royal family itself. No other force is capable of that. That's why I think they should be called the special forces, the special force. Now, this sounds like a pretty rigid hierarchy. You have the quarks in their castles. You have the electrons in working the fields. You have the neutrinos that pretty much everyone's going to ignore. There is a resistance. There are particles that are trying to fight the system, and those are the anti-particles. For every particle in the universe, from top and bottom quark, to electron, to neutrino, they have a mirror opposite. They have a the exact same properties, the exact same properties, same mass, same spin, but they have different charges, opposite charges. And it used to be, way back in the early universe, it used to be that matter and antimatter came in equal proportions, that they were roughly in balance. Something happened early on, probably in the first few minutes of the universe's existence, that tipped the scales in favor of normal matter, where now the universe is dominated by normal matter and, and antimatter only gets manufactured in extreme events like in our laboratories or in extreme, say, supernova, antimatter is very rare. And it's a good thing. Regular matter is happy that this resistance faction of antimatter is stuck to the fringes of society because when matter and antimatter meet, they annihilate each other and release a tremendous amount of energy, pure, 100% efficient mass-to-energy conversion more efficient than, say, atomic bombs. So naturally, if you're a quark, if you're safe and comfortable and happy inside of your proton, you don't want any antimatter anywhere near you. You don't want, say, a positron infiltrating your field of electrons, finding one of them, letting them meet, annihilating, releasing a tremendous amount of energy and possibly enough energy to rip apart your own castle walls. You don't want that. So even though these freedom fighters will go all the way, they will do what it takes to bring down the system, they're too rare. They're too rare, and so most of the matter in our universe is normal matter, not antimatter, and they're totally happy for it. So it sounds like, it sounds like these quarks have everything going for them. They get to sit in stable configurations inside protons and neutrons. They get electrons to do all their work. They can communicate with electromagnetism. They can employ the weak nuclear force every once in a while to do some subterfuge or sabotage. And the antimatter is safely pretty rare. But the quarks aren't really at the top of the food chain here in the subatomic world. There's a shadow government. There's a shadow government. There's an organization, a group of people that are really calling the shots. And those are the Higgs. The Higgs boson, this field, this particle, is the true force behind the throne. The real power sits with the Higgs because it's the Higgs that permeates all of space-time that provides mass for the leptons, for the electrons, for the top quark, 
for the bottom quark, for the up quark, for the down quark, for the strange, the charm, the positron, maybe even the neutrino. It's by interacting with the Higgs that these other particles are imbued with mass, that, bec that have mass. Their interaction with the Higgs boson is their mass. Without the Higgs boson, no mass. So the up quark, the down quark, the ones sitting inside the protons and neutrons, they owe everything to the Higgs. Without the Higgs, there's nothing. And when a royal decree comes out about what action a part particle should take, it's really the Higgs that's whispering in their ear. Thank you so much. I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. You can also go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to learn how you can keep all of my education and outreach initiatives going. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. Go watch another video.